Hello and welcome back to this Air Hauler 2 tutorial series. Uh, just a reminder that this series has been conducted on the X-Plane 11 version of Air Hauler 2, but it's totally applicable to both FSX and P3D versions because all three are pretty much identical. So today what we're going to run through is missions, uh, ad hoc flights and also just a little bit around commodities. But before we get into that, just a couple of things to run through from last episode which was around cargo flights. Uh, the first thing that I should have mentioned which I'm sort of going to cover in detail when we talk about fleet management is the fact that for your aircraft it can be quite a good idea to go ahead and take out insurance. So essentially it will cost you a certain amount per month and for the C90 it's going to be 9000 per month. But what it does mean is that if you have a major repair bull, you have a heavy landing or you do some damage to your aircraft, uh, basically that will help uh, avoid having a massive invoice to have to pay in a month. So I'll go ahead and take that, nine grand a month, that's uh, nice and easy. So that means this aircraft, if we have some pilots that are uh, treated a bit roughly, we know we're not going to get hammered with a massive bill. The other thing to be aware of, and I sort of touched on this before, is the fact that you do have to get uh, checks done on your aircraft. Uh, so for a start, if you do get the condition down low, so I think once it starts getting around sort of 80% or lower, maybe a little bit even higher than that, you can go ahead and repair your aircraft here. Uh, also, every every so often, you're going to have to go ahead and do some checks. So the A check is every 50 hours, your B check is every 100 hours, and your C check is every 300. So as you can see, for the first 50, you do your A, but then when you get to 100 hours, you'll have both your A and B check due because you'll have your second 50-hour one as well as your B check. Now, hopefully that makes sense. So what you should do is don't do both. Um, or if they're close together, don't do them both. Just do the, the higher one, and that will take care of the lower one. So here goes another tip for you. Uh, the third thing that I just wanted to cover off is you'll remember in our, uh, in our flight, uh, here we go, we're at our base right here. In our flight last time, we had to offload some fuel, and now um, what happened, that fuel just basically disappeared, and uh, I lost some money on that. So what you can actually do, though, is you can go ahead and create some capacity in your base for fuel storage. So I could say 10,000 and add capacity. Uh, and it's going to tell me right here how much it's going to cost. So if I put it right up to the maximum of 27,500, it would cost me $37,000. Uh, I don't want that much. I just want 10,000. So let's put 10,000. I won't get right on the button, I don't think. There we go. Close enough. I'll buy 10,000 gallons of storage that's quite a lot probably don't need that much but it means when I offload fuel at my base instead of it going into uh, into nowhere and I lose that fuel it means it goes into my fuel storage capacity and I can throw it straight back in the aircraft when I need extra fuel so it just saves a bit of money there and a bit of wastage uh, you've also got some uh, uh, some uh, options here to sell fuel and buy fuel we'll cover that off in a later episode but uh, if you've got too much fuel you can go ahead and sell it so anyway, let's get into the topic of the video today and we're going to cover off uh, ad hoc flights and missions and humanitarian missions. There's two types of missions. You remember last time we went through the uh, cargo flight and how to go ahead and do that. Uh, today we won't actually do a flight, I'll just show you how to set these up just so you get a good feel for how to how to do them. So the first things I wanted to run through is I'll start at the, the, the far right here, humanitarian missions. Uh, and the, if I click that at the moment, it says there are no human humanitarian missions available currently. Spit it out, mate. Come on. It's late in the week. I've got an excuse. Anyway, so humanitarian missions, basically these are missions based on real world events. So a couple of weeks ago, actually, I had, I think there was five or six missions sitting in there. And what you had to do was uh, fly emergency medical supplies from one airport to another. And that was related to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, which we are more than aware of. And so that's what humanitarian missions are. So you won't always have humanitarian missions. Uh, but when they do pop up, they'll be based on real-world events. Now, the th key thing to know about humanitarian missions is that you earn no money from them. So you're not going to build your bank account balance. It's going to end up costing you because you're going to have to find some medical supplies and then transport them and all that sort of stuff. But what it does do is it gives you a big boost in your reputation. So uh, that's really the trade-off. You don't get any money, but you do get a boost in your reputation. So if you're looking to grind up your um, reputation there, it's a great way of doing it. 
So there goes uh, humanitarian missions. Now, the next thing I'll go to is ad hoc flights. So we're talking about passenger operations here. I'm going to do a complete episode on routes because it's a uh, that's really designed around AI pilots. So we'll ignore that in the meantime and we'll go to ad hoc flight. So as it suggests, it's just a specific flight that you can set up. Now, if you have a good memory, you remember that I actually set up my King Air C90 to be a cargo aircraft. So I've actually gone and changed the configuration. And I'll just show you how you do that. It's really easy. Go into your fleet down here, change configuration. See, at the moment, it's, um, it's, a, it's a passenger. So it would go from passenger to cargo. So I could change my config. Uh, but I've already gone ahead and done that. So... Uh, having a passenger config, you need to have a passenger configuration to transport passengers. Makes sense, right? Now, here's another little hot tip for you. What I su would suggest is set up your all your aircraft as passenger aircrafts, unless you really want a specific cargo aircraft. Because what you can do is you can can actually transport cargo on a passenger aircraft. It does have a slightly more, oh, sorry, a slightly less capacity, so you don't carry as much cargo as a cargo specific aircraft because you've got the seats to take care of and all the other little bits and bobs that go with a with a passenger aircraft um, but what it does allow you to do is fly two types of cargo so it's nice and easy that if you're flying all types of different flights uh, you don't have to keep going changing that configuration and it costs you know 10 grand or whatever it was every time so just keep that in mind but if you do want to fly just cargo flights it's fine make it a cargo configuration but anyway i've chosen my ad hoc flight so you just go in here and select your aircraft that you're rated in as usual the aircraft will be departing from nzwn because that's where it's located right now and then you say okay tell me where do you want to fly to and i'm just going to put christchurch nzch you can choose whatever you like and i go you selected and you'll be presented with this screen right here, which is all about setting up your aircraft for your ad hoc passenger flight. So it's got the details of your departure and destination right there. Uh, the first thing you're going to look at is ticket pricing. So essentially you allocate the type of seat that you want to sell and at what quantity. But for us, it's very easy because we've got seven economy seats. So over here, seven economy seats all sold $1,050 total revenue. So... One thing to take into account when you fly the big jets is that uh, this will take a lot more balancing. But for these smaller flights, really easy. Uh, the next thing is the service. So as, as you can see, no service will be just $35 cost. Uh, but if you go ahead and put executive service, uh, you look at this cost up the top here, 741. That's the, how much the overall cost of the flight will be, 749, I should say, for executive service. If you look at no service, 687. So it adds costs to the flight but what it does do is it adds passenger satisfaction and pa passenger satisfaction is a big component when flying these types of flights so there's a couple of things that affect that one is the type of service that you have and the second thing is your flying skills because if you get in a whole lot of rush rough weather i should say bumping all over the place rough landings passenger satisfaction will go down and they'll let you know about it by the way when you're in the flight uh, so uh, that's one thing to take into account. So while you can increase your uh, passenger satisfaction, spit it out, uh, it will cost you more. So let's just go complimentary service right there. Then you get an overview of all the different breakdown of your costs, how far your flight is in the predicted time. And like I said, that direct operating cost, which is that overall flight. So the key thing is compare the operating costs to your total revenue just to make sure that uh, you've got that nicely balanced up because you don't want to have obviously more costs than revenue. Duh. Okay, so as you can see right here, it's only a 300 odd dollar profit. And so these kind of flights, uh, particularly with these smaller aircraft, don't make an amazing amount of money, uh, but they will give you passenger reputation. So uh, that's something to obviously take into account. The other thing that I'd highly recommend is check out the Air Hauler 2 manual around passenger flights just to make sure you understand all the different components. Uh, the, the key points I've talked about are customer satisfaction, but you also need to know that when passengers are boarding, you need, need to have your engines off. Now, passengers will board on this aircraft in just one minute because it's a very small aircraft, but obviously for the big jets, it's going to take a bit longer. So you've got to make sure that you can um, that you uh, take the time to... Sorry, that you have your engines off. Get it right. Okay, 
Uh, and the other thing is just press Control F1 to check your customer satisfaction when you're on the flight. So there you go. That's how you set it up. Nice and easy. Uh, then obviously you press Fly Now and get into it. We're not going to do that. We're going to get on to the next part, which is Available Missions. Uh, so all of these are sort of the single player um, or the, the, the type of flying that you can do. Uh, as opposed to some other flying which um, the AI pilots are more suited for. So available missions, to cut a long story short, you have uh, NPCs or non-playable characters. At, a, at every airport you go and visit, you'll suddenly get these little um, missions that pop up from people that you've happened to come across when you visited those airports, and they'll ask you to do certain flights and carry certain things. So in this case here, we have got um, Patrick Hunt, and all he's saying in this mission here, he's actually not telling us to fly anything specifically. He says, can you just supply me with 1,085 pounds of cosmetics? And so this is where commodities come into play. So let me do a quick overview of commodities, and we'll go into this in a lot more depth when I talk about factories in a future episode. But you do need to start to think about commodities, which are essentially just goods. Uh, so we'll go up to the uh, up to commodities, uh, which are, where do we find them? Over here. So they're in the factories and construction part of the program. But just go into items. This is all we want to go into at the moment. And it's going to go ahead and list down the left-hand side all the different commodities that are available. So just all the different goods that are available uh, around, uh, around all the airports. Now the key thing to know about these commodities are there are three tiers. There's your tier one items, these ones here. These are basic items that are going to be base that you can find everywhere around the world. Now, not every airport will have every one of these commodities. They usually have a list, depending on the size of the airport, they'll have a list of maybe 15, 20 of different types of commodities. So you have to look around to find the commodity that you need. But these are readily available throughout the world. So that's tier one items. Tier two and tier three items are a different story. These require you to basically create them or craft them if you're if you come from that genre so essentially what you'll need to do and once again we'll do it in a future episode to get these the only way you can get these is by building a factory and crafting them and so you look at air hauler cds to make those you need a plastic so plastics are just your normal tier one uh commodity so where are they plastics uh, no they're not they're not a tier one what am i talking about they're a tier two are they they are two. They're a tier two. So that's right. So it can be a little bit tricky, but uh, this was not a good example. But let's go with it. Uh, so uh, what did I say? Air hauler CDs. You need one plastics. To make plastics, you need two chemicals. So you'd need to go ahead and find, uh, here goes, chemicals uh, up the top here. Now they might be already available at your base, so that's great. Um, otherwise you'll have to go and find them, get those chemicals, turn them into uh, plastics, which can then be turned into air hauler CDs. So hopefully you get sort of the, the, the um, gist of that, is the only way that you can get tier two and tier three items is by crafting them. In other words, combining two or more other types of commodities. So what you need to know at this stage in air hauler two development is that Tier 2 and Tier 3 items can only be created through factories. You can't, they're not available at any other airport. You can't buy and sell them. Now, what Slopey, the, develop, the, the developer, has said is that in the future, you will be able to buy and sell these at limited airports around the world. But in the meantime, the only use for Tier 2 and Tier 3 is conducting humanitarian missions and these other missions that we're talking about right now. So back to our original point, which was cosmetics as you can see here to get cosmetics we need one chemical and one perfume that's how we would be able to craft them but we would need to have a factory at our base to be able to do that uh, so to be if we go back to our good mate here uh, Patrick Hunt uh, he wants a thousand and eighty five pounds of cosmetics the only way we're going to be able to supply that is create them and supply them to him as you can see there so the way that the flying would come in here is that you might have a look. What did we say the two? Let me go back here again. Chemicals and perfumes. So we would look in our overview map. And here goes Wellington. And down the left-hand side, commodity stocks. Uh, chemicals. There are no chemicals. And there are perfumes. So I know that I'm not going to have to fly in any perfumes because 
um, we've got them at the local market. So here goes the local market, and here goes what you've actually purchased in your uh, in your stock. So I would uh, perfumes are probably going to be fine. I can I've got enough stock in the local market, and you'll buy it, and then it gets transported to your factory. But what I would have to do is find chemicals. Uh, so how would I do that? I'd go ahead and go to Stock Finder. Basically, select the commodity that you are looking for. Chemicals. Uh, put in your current airport, NZWN, and go find. Uh, or sorry, you don't go find. It just automatically brings it up. And then you really just want to uh, find airports that are close to you. So as we can see, our closest one is Palmerston North, 71 nautical miles away. So we would need now Palmy North. Uh, is right up in here uh, so you need to make that 71 nautical mile trip to go and grab those chemicals and bring them back to base so once you get your company up and running the, these missions can become quite um, quite lucrative and as you do more missions for your local guys that you meet and these will be available to a whole lot of different airports by the way uh, you, their, their reputa your reputation with them will increase now if we go to clients as you can see I've only got clients in Wellington and Christchurch because those are the only airports that I have visited thus far. Okay, everybody, I have to admit I've edited this in after I did all my initial recording because I forgot to mention this when I, uh, when I did it. And that's that you can actually make money by buying commodities low at one airport and then selling them at another airport that uh, has a higher price. Uh, and so it's quite a good idea that particularly if like you, you fly a flight from from your base to another, you know, say a cargo flight or something to another airport, and then there's no return flight, and that can happen quite often. There's no scheduled return flight. So you just might want to grab a whole bunch of commodities and bring them back to your base. So uh, and, and if you can buy them cheaply at the place that you're departing and your base has it for more, uh, you can sell them there for more, then obviously you can make a bit of money. So if we take a look at this, um, I'm just randomly looking here. Uh, here we go here, cleaning products. So I'm in New Z uh, NZWN here. Uh, I can buy them for $56 right here in uh, per unit in Wellington. And then in Christchurch, they're $72. Uh, the good thing is, is that what it will do is show you a green dot uh, uh, for the airports that it's uh, more expensive to buy them. So that's nice and easy. Electronics. Uh, See, uh, I would buy them for 23 but it's only $23 in Christchurch, so that wouldn't be good. Uh, it will just show on your map all the uh, airports that hold them. So here's, a, here's one here too. Uh, Blu-ray players I can buy for $122 in Wellington, and I could sell them for $144 in Auckland. So depending on what airport you actually... So if I went up to and went to Auckland Airport, for example, the same thing applies here. I go to Fine China... Uh, here we go. I could, uh, if it was a return flight from Auckland to Wellington, I could buy Fine China for 160, and then go ahead and sell them for 209 dollars uh, per unit. So a 49 dollar profit per unit. That's quite good. So that's the premise there. It's another way to make money uh, when you fly around, particularly if you've got a little bit of extra cargo space. Buy, uh, you might buy low and then sell high. The basics of economics. So yeah, there you go. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, a quick overview of the different types of flights that you can that you're likely to conduct yourself so once again humanitarian missions so those are no dollars but you get reputation you've got your ad hoc flight which is a passenger flight which you can set up between two specific airports just make sure you've got enough money to cover the costs that's the key thing uh, you will get passenger reputation you've got to have an aircraft that can carry passengers too so that's the key point there then you've got your available missions uh, which are obviously um, missions from local NPCs that you meet uh, and they want certain things delivered to them so you just got to sort of figure out what they want often they're commodities that you need to go and craft uh, you need to build factories for that which will go into more detail but they'll either be tier one which are readily available everywhere or they'll be tier two and three which are needed to be crafted from other uh, commodity so you will need a factory to do those so hopefully that explained that part of the uh, program uh, a little bit more uh, if you do have any questions make sure you uh, put them down in the uh, down in the comments below um, a big thank you to everybody that has been uh, giving me tips um, and th other little things that they found out about the program in the comments make sure you check those out very helpful but uh, we'll continue the series. I'm not too sure what the next episode will be. I'll go and figure it out. But we'll continue looking at taking a deeper look into some of the options available here on Air Hauler 2. So thank you very much for watching. Make sure you smash that like button down below. And until next time, everybody, take it easy.